From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Taylor and Francis D. in Broadway Bill with Gail Patrick and Raymond Walburn. Lux presents Hollywood. Broadway Bill, the story of a young man and three characters who dominate his life, two girls and a racehorse. Broadway Bill brings to our microphone Robert Taylor, Francis D., Gail Patrick, and Raymond Walburn with one of the greatest personalities of the American turf, Alfred G. Vanderbilt, as the evening's special guest. Conducting our orchestra is Louis Silvers. And now, before hearing from our producer, some timely news for the ladies. This program comes to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the thrifty care for your silks, rayons, cottons, linens, and woolens. Just a few flakes make so many suds, a penny's worth of Lux goes a long, long way. For instance, about a penny's worth of Lux, unless the water is hard, will do your underthings three times, your stockings four times. Just a little more than a penny's worth will do a sweater and a dress. And in hard water, just a bit more Lux softens the water, gives you an abundance of suds. Yes, a little goes so far, Lux is thrifty. And it's safe, safe for everything, safe in water alone. So keep the generous large size box handy, and remember, Lux is safe and it saves. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The actor who plays the title role in tonight's play has never been on Broadway. And what's more, has refused to speak a word over our microphone. It's no breach of confidence to tell you that Broadway Bill is a racehorse. And to star with him, we've chosen two of the screen colonies, foremost lovers of horseflesh, Robert Taylor and Francis D. Right now, some 30 head of horses are grazing on the thousand-acre ranch owned by Miss D and her famous husband, Joel McRae, who co-stars for me with Barbara Stanwyck in Union Pacific. While also out in the San Fernando Valley, Robert Taylor devotes many of his off-screen hours to raising and riding some of the finest thoroughbreds this side of Kentucky. When she's not in the saddle, Miss D's favorite means of locomotion about the ranch is an old-fashioned buggy left by a former owner. That buggy is rather typical of the style of living on the D. McRae premises. They have no phone there, and when Paramount wants to get in touch with her, they signal frantically by shortwave radio. Miss D makes her Lux debut tonight as Alice Higgins. Robert Taylor is here through courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studio, where he started his screen career for $35 a week. He came to Hollywood from Pomona College and his hometown, Beatrice, Nebraska. A small-town boy who played the cello, won prizes for oratory, and wanted to be a psychiatrist. He'll appear shortly with Myrna Loy in MGM's Lucky Night and comes to our stage as Dan Brooks. Welcome is also written on the doormat in great big letters for Gail Patrick, who just completed Man of Conquest for Republic. Gail is the most vociferous rooter for our local baseball club, the Hollywood Stars. And tonight, she plays Margaret. Raymond Walburn again shows his superiority in character roles in the part of Colonel Pettigrew. Our stars are at the post. The weather is clear, the track fast. And we're off, as the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Taylor and Francis D. and Broadway Bill with Gail Patrick and Raymond Walburn. The thriving little town of Higginsville, named for its founder and first citizen, Jeremiah L. Higgins, who lived in Higgins Park, if we may believe the bronze plaque on his statue, from 1790 to 1844. While he's long since been laid to rest, another J.L. in the person of his grandson carries on, still very much Higginsville's public citizen number one. From his office on Main Street, he controls the destiny of his tiny world. And I want them at my house tonight. All of them. Yes, J.L. And on the dot of eight. Uh, yes, J.L. Especially Mr. Dan Brooks, if he can spare the time. Yes, J.L. Well, what are you waiting for? Go call him. Uh, yes, J.L. Sorry, J.L. <sighs> oh, Miss Peterson, I've been waiting to see uh, you. Not now, Mel. J.L.'s on a rampage. This is the first of the month, and there's a usual board of directors meeting. I have to call all his sons-in-law and remind them. Hand me that list, Mel. Uh, what list? What do you think? The J.L. Higgins Iron Company, the J.L. Higgins Furniture Company, the J.L. Higgins Department Store, Real Estate Company, Lampshade Corporation, Paper Box Company. You know, 
I never have understood why J.L. didn't take over old man Sumter's undertaking parlor while he was at it. <laughs> give him time, give him time. Higgins, that's not a family, it's a disease. Here, here's them numbers. No, just watch the little boys jump. This is Mr. Winslow speaking, Mrs. Peterson. Meeting? Of course I'll be there. Just tell J.L. he can count on me. Mr. Early speaking. Meeting tonight? Thank you. I'll be there right on the dot. Oh, yes, Mrs. Peterson. I wouldn't miss it. Eight o'clock. Tell Mr. Higgins I'll be delighted. Yes, this is Mrs. Brooks. No, Mr. Brooks isn't at home, Mrs. Peterson. Well, are you sure he isn't at his office? Oh, I see. Well, don't worry. I'll see that he gets my father's message about the meeting. Mary. Yes, Miss Brooks. Will you try to reach Mr. Brooks, please? Tell him there's a family meeting tonight. My father wants him to be there. Yes, ma'am. Where shall I call him, ma'am? If I'm not mistaken, you can reach Mr. Brooks at the race track. There he goes into the stretch. Come on, Broadway Bill. Give him his head, Whitey. How's he doing, Dad? Oh, swell. Come on, Bill. Right him, Whitey. Come on, boy. That's it. Oh, what time? What time? What did he make it in? A minute and 40. A minute and 40? Gee, that's marvelous. Bring him over here, Whitey. Uh, how's that, Mr. Dan? If this horse are going fast, nobody's going to see him with the naked eye. <laughs> <laughs> nice riding, Whitey. Nice going, Bill. <laughs> I think it all. Look at that damn rooster there, Mr. Dan. He's coming right to set right upon Broadway Bill's neck. Hey, what is this? Well, Miss Alice here have been training that there Skeeter to do that. Skeeter, that's the rooster's name, Dan. I christened him. Well, mascot and everything, huh? All right, Whitey, take Bill in and rub him down. Yes, sir. Come on, Broadway Bill. Get up there. Incidentally, up. Alice, I'm beginning to think you know more about this horse than I do. You've been hanging around the stable an awful lot lately. Want to make something out of it? No, no, no. I was just thinking of Emperor Higgins. You better not let him catch you, Princess. Emperor J.L. Higgins doesn't know I'm alive. I'm just the young brat of the household. Well, you will stay single. You'd get married and give him another son-in-law. You'd have to be pretty clever to do that. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's right. Funny, but you've always seemed just as much one of J.L.'s daughters as Margaret herself. Somehow I, I can't get it through my head that you're just a lowly niece. <laughs> Lowly's the word. The black lamb daughter of a black sheep brother. Ever hear about my dad? No, they don't mention him much. No. He was the one Higgins in history who refused to hig. You know what he did? <laughs> Threw over his whole share in the family enterprises to get away from this place and do the things he wanted to do. Swell. Oh, he never exactly found any pots of gold lying around. But he did find what's more important. I never saw my mother. She died when I was born. And I only had Dad till I was 11. That was pretty tough. Yeah. But Dad had a sort of creed, I guess you'd call it. He said you've got just one life, remember that, and always make the best of it. Jail's helped me to do that. All the affection he was too proud to show Dad while he's poured it out to me. He's treated me like a daughter, all right. I love the old tyrant. Hey, listen to me, will you? The biography of Alice Higgins in six easy chapters. <laughs> well, I've got to go now, Dan. How about tomorrow? Another workout for Broadway, Bill? Sure. Uh, but, uh, but, Alice, if, if you got other things to do... Oh, no, thanks. I love to watch that horse run. Only thing is, I'd like to see him run against something besides jackrabbits. Yeah, so would I. He ought to be racing right now. He's got everything. That horse, stamina, breeding, everything. Dan... The Imperial Track opened last week. Yeah, don't I know it. Why don't you, Dan? Uh, what? Take Broadway Bill down there and start him racing. You crazy? What about my job? Oh, what about it? You've been wanting to chuck it in Higginsville, too, ever since you got here. Listen, when I came here, I was just a racetrack mug, a bunch of horses and nothing else. Now? You happy now, Dan? Uh, sure. Sure, of course I am. Sure. Of course you are. Well, so long, Dan. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks, I've been looking all over for you. Your wife wants you to come right home. Oh, and says to remind you there's a family meeting tonight. Get out of here. Huh? You heard me. I said... Oh, never mind. I'm sorry, kid. Thanks. He made it in 140. What do you think of that, Margaret? Who made what in 140? Broadway Bill and with Whitey up, oh, too. Dan, and... you're not dressed yet. Do you want to be late for the meeting? Late for it? I want to duck it completely. Don't talk nonsense. Here, fasten my dress. Okay. But look, darling, there's a swell full of moon out. Let's go and sit under it all night, for two nights, for a week. Dan, father expects us at that meeting, and we're going to be there. All right, suppose we aren't. What difference does it make? Your father will do all the talking, and we'll just sit there with our heads on a hinge. 
I'll tell you what. Let's let's just stand in front of the house and throw rocks at the windows. Mm, that'd be cute. Oh, Dan, when are you going to grow up? Uh, sure, I know. I'm a big businessman now. Crown prince of the Higgins dynasty, husband of the eldest daughter, and... Say, why don't you put a zipper on this thing? Someday you'll be calling the meetings. You wouldn't want others to throw rocks. If they didn't, they'd be saps. There you are, all fastened. Now, hurry and dress. Uh, Margaret, listen to me. Well? Suppose I should tell you that I'm miserable here, that I'm... I'm dying a slow death. Would you go away with me? Where to? Some place where I can earn my own living, doing the things I want to do. Back to the racing business, I suppose, so that I can live in cheap boarding houses, not knowing where my next meal's coming from. Well, isn't that better than this? Isn't it better than having your husband a parasite who only holds his job because he's married to you? Oh, Dan. Oh, you're just tired, Dan. I'll speak to Father about a vacation for you. <laughs> vacation? You'll never get it into your head that this isn't just a whim of mine, will you? Look, Margaret, I was around horses since I was a kid. They're in my blood. Of course. And you were marvelous to give them up. I appreciate it. Now kiss me and finish dressing. Did did I ever tell you the story of Broadway Bill about his mother? She was blind, you know. Here's your tie, dear. Well, when Bill was born, the old mare had a problem on her hands. She wanted to be near her baby, but she, she couldn't find him. It was pitiful. Well, then I got an idea. I put a bell around Broadway Bill's then neck. Then you hold still? How can I tie your tie? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Well, after a while, an amazing thing began to happen. Broadway Bill realized that something was wrong with his mother. He'd never leave her side. Yes, sir, all the other colts had run lickety-split all over the place, but not him. He stuck by his mother, leading her with that bell of his everywhere she went. Now, what do you think of that? It's beautiful. Now, where's your coat? How can I help loving the guy after all that? Look, come here to the window. I want to show you something. Now, listen. <whistles> Hear that? That's Bill. Isn't that swell? You're still Huckleberry Finn, aren't you, darling? And now, if you'll hurry up, I'll let you go searching for pirates after the meeting. Uh, okay, Marcus. I guess you just don't get it. You have the time, Mr. Early? Of course, J.L. It's uh, just five minutes past eight. Thank you. And what does your watch say, Mr. Winslow? Why, uh, uh eight five is right, J.L., and uh, fifteen seconds. Uh, fifteen is right, J.L. Don't tell me that turnip of yours has stopped, J.L. I thought the sun came up by it. This is no occasion for humor, Alice. I was merely checking my own time to give Margaret and Mr. Brooks the benefit of the doubt. Yes, it seems to me when all the rest of the family can manage to get here on time, Mr. Brooks might manage it, too. Matilda? Yes, Father, sorry. Good evening, Father. Hello, everybody. You're late, Margaret. Late, Dan. Yes, we are, J.L. I'll tell you how it was. If you please, we will start the meeting. <clears throat> oh, I sure. Hiya, Princess. Hi. How's it feel to be in the dog <clears throat> First of all, regarding the Acme Lumber Company. At 10 o'clock this morning, it became the Higgins Lumber Company. I hope you all approve. Oh, yes. Naturally, J.L. Oh, a wise move, J.L. Yeah. Dan? Hmm? Oh, oh uh, of course, J.L. Hmm. <laughs> For the time being, the new company has no active head. It will remain so until, uh, until... Uh, well, I'm sure you all know what I mean. <clears throat> sure we do, J.L. You mean until I provide the family with another in-law. Well, you'd better not wait. What's that, Alice? The man I marry won't care for the lumber business. If he does, I won't marry him. Don't you be impudent, Alice. Sorry, J.L., but it goes. Now to other matters. I'm happy to say that all the Higgins Enterprises are doing excellently. That is all except the Higgins Paper Box Company. There, in fact, the sales have decreased 22%. Oh, oh, damn, Mr. Brooks, can you offer any explanation? Nope. Hmm. Then I trust you won't mind if I suggest a cure. Namely, more application on your part. More attention to business and less attention to that ridiculous horse. What's your point, J.L.? It's quite obvious. Three years ago, you came to this town penniless, a man with questionable background, some sort of a, an association with a racetrack business, I believe. But I overlooked that. You and Margaret were in love, and I gave my approval to your marriage. I even placed you in charge of the Higgins Paper Box Company, the largest of the Higgins Enterprises. You were the envy of my other sons-in-law, Mr. Early and Mr. Winslow. In fact, you still are. Oh, now, J.L. Well, I wouldn't say that. Please. <clears throat> For two years, you were successful, Mr. Brooks. This last year, you've not been. Therefore, beginning tomorrow, I shall expect you to devote yourself exclusively to business. And I shall insist that you dispose of that horse. See that it's done. Now, Wait regarding a minute, the... Mr. Higgins. Dan. Well? I have no intention of selling my horse. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving Higginsville in the morning. Hooray! Bravo, Dan! Bravo! Alice! You're right, J.L. I have neglected the business. And the reason is simple. I hate it. I stuck it out for three years, and I've been miserable every minute of the time. For years, we've been making the Higgins Special Paper Box for four cents and selling it for five. 
If only once we made it for five cents and sold it for four, even that had helped. What do you mean? I know, I know, I know. I know I sound crazy to you. Maybe I am. But somehow you strike me the same way. The only thing you're interested in is gobbling up money. Now, you be careful what you say, Dan. Look at you, J.L. You haven't had a vacation in 40 years. You're just rotting away in your own little kingdom. Well, I'm getting out. And as for that horse of mine, Mr. J.L. Higgins, I wouldn't give him up for you or anybody else. If it weren't for Broadway, Bill, I'd have been out of this town a long time ago. I was broke when I got here, and I'm leaving the same way. There's nothing out of Higginsville that I want. So, if it's all the same to you, you can accept my resignation. I'll wait for you in the car, Margaret. You needn't bother. I'm staying right here. Margaret, what's the matter with you? You can't let him go alone. He loves you. Alice, this is none of your affair. It is my affair. I won't sit by and see Margaret throw away her life. What I choose to do is my own business. Dan, you say you don't belong in Higginsville, and you never did. Well, I do. We'll leave it at that. But, darling, you're my wife, and I've got to go. You're my husband, and I'm going to stay. All right. I'm sorry. Goodbye. I just heard the first act of Broadway Bill, starring Robert Taylor and Francis D. with Gail Patrick. During our brief intermission, we bring you the Browning family. It's late afternoon, and all is quiet in the house. Only great Aunt Cynthia, who is visiting the Brownings, is at home. She's a rather grim, determined old lady who is constantly bewildered by the ways of her up-to-date young nieces. But wait, here comes 16-year-old Dot now, home from a shopping trip. Mother! Your mother's out, Dorothy. What is it? Oh, hello, Aunt Cynthia. Look what I just bought. Hmm. What is it? A new slip. Oh, isn't it a honey, Aunt Cynthia? Looks perishable to me. Why, Auntie, it's what we always wear. Silk and lace. In my day, young girls wore more practical things. <laughs> but, Auntie, it's so much more fun wearing soft, silky things. But they don't last. Oh, but they do. You see, we lux our things after each wearing. Oh, and it's just wonderful the way Lux flakes keep our things new looking a long, long time. Hmm. Well, look at my slip. I've had it over a year. Over a year? Well, it looks new to me. You can thank Lux Flakes for that. Better try it, Annie. Think how glamorous it'll keep your things. Really, Dorothy? Glamorous at my age? Well, well, I, I must try Lux. It looks as if Dot has won Aunt Cynthia over to her side. She's right about Lux Flakes, you know. They do keep under things new looking longer. Gentle Lux has no harmful alkali. Absolutely nothing to spoil any color or fabric that's safe in water alone. It quickly removes perspiration and leaves your things fresh and lovely looking. For daintiness, Lux under things after every wearing. Your blouses and dresses, often. And remember, a little goes so far. Lux is thrifty. And now we're ready for the second act of our play. Mr. DeMille. We continue with Broadway Bill, starring Robert Taylor and Francis D. with Gail Patrick and Raymond Walburn. With Broadway Bill and the stable boy Whitey, Dan Brooks left the royal empire of the Higgins family and went to the Imperial Racetrack. Starting on a shoestring, he is determined to make a living by racing his horse. But things haven't been going any too well. Back home in Higginsville, Alice runs into Margaret's room, waving the sports section of the newspaper. Margaret, did you see this? Sit down, Alice. What is it? In the sporting section, it's about Dan. What about him? All the rotten luck. Dan, he had Broadway Bill in a race yesterday, just a little one. And well, listen. Hard luck horse of the day was a newcomer to Imperial named Broadway Bill. He acted badly at the post, delaying the start of the race nearly ten minutes, and then proceeded to throw his rider and thus lose whatever chance he may have had to crash into the winner's circle. Broadway oh, Bill you needn't a... read any more. I heard about all that from Dan. There was a letter from him this morning. What did he say? Oh, how he's sorry, and he hopes I understand, and he still loves me. No, I mean about the race. Oh, I don't know. The horse won't run without some rooster or some such ridiculous thing. Skeeter! Yes, that's it. Did you send it to him? <laughs> don't be absurd. But, ba Margaret, Broadway Bill needs him. He can't win without him. Don't you want him to win? I want Dan to get this nonsense out of his head and come back. I don't think he's coming back. Oh? oh. Well, if that's the way he feels about it, perhaps that's all right, too. Look, Margaret, I know you've never liked me very much, and I suppose it's pretty fresh of me to give you advice. But don't do it, Margaret. Do what? Give him up. Oh, I know you haven't yet, but you're thinking about it. Why don't you go down there with him? Dan is worth hanging on to, Margaret. He's... well, he's wonderful. What are you so excited about? He loves you. Doesn't that mean anything to you? 
If he loves me, he'll come back. It's the only way I'd be interested. You deserve to lose him. Alice. You're just like all the rest of the Higgins tribe. Hard and cold and practical. I hope you do lose him. Well, it just ain't no use, boss. It ain't only that race the other day, but it's the way he's been working out mornings. He just won't run without that rooster. Think she'll send it, boss? I don't know, Whitey. We'll enter Broadway bill again this week and hope for the best. You got the $25 interest fee, boss? No. Well, you better hope for that first. Don't worry, I'll get it if I have to. Hey, look out there. Isn't that Colonel Pettigrew? Looks sure enough like him. Hey, Colonel. Colonel Pettigrew. Whitey, this is straight from heaven. Hey, Colonel, over here. Well, 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 Dan Brooks, as I live and breathe. Glad to see you, my boy. Glad to see you. How are you, Colonel? Exceptionally well, thank you. Well, come on in. Happy, come here, Dan. This is an old friend and business associate, Mr. Oscar McGuire, laughingly known as Happy. How do you do? All right. Well, sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, <laughs> this is like old times, Dan. Colonel, I'm certainly glad to see you. I need a friend right now. Well, you know me, Dan, anything at all, anything at all. <laughs> That's swell. Uh, look, Colonel, I, uh, I got a horse, Broadway Bill. He's right on top and raring to go. All I gotta do is get him up to that starting gate. He'll do the rest. You fine, fine. We must get him up there at the first possible moment. Oh, that's great, boy. Am I glad I saw you. Nothing at all, nothing at all. You'll be glad a little later. <laughs> then, confidentially, I, uh, I've got a little proposition down here at the track that figures to clean up $160,000, and I'm going to let you in on it. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir, just for old times' sake. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's mighty nice of you, Colonel. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. It's, uh, it's going to need a little uh, financing, though. I need what? Oh, nothing substantial, mind you. A mere matter of uh, $50 placed on a horse I have in mind, and the winnings to be placed on a series of sure things. It can't miss, my friend. It can't miss. Oh, wait a minute. Are you trying to borrow $50 from me? Oh, vulgarly speaking, yes. Yeah, well, I'm trying to borrow 25 from you. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, it looks like a deadlock. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah, so am I. However, I expect to be rolling in wealth in a few days. You look me up then. Do that, Dan. Sure, sure, I will. Come along, happy, my friend. There are greener pastures just over the hill. Yeah, that's where the poor house is, ain't it? <laughs> easy, Bill. Easy, boy. Easy. Oh, get down now, Bill. Get down, get down. That's the way he's been all the time, boss. Restless like. He won't be no good at all unless we get. Oh, that shut thing. up about that rooster. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's just that I kind of hey, figured. Hey, that... what's that? What? That? What is it? Boss, I ain't only even guess. <laughs> Skeeter. It's Skeeter. Hello. Princess. Well, here we are, me and Skeeter. Princess, you're a message from the gods. Give him to me. Here you are, Bill. Here's your boyfriend. Get up there on his back, Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, look at that. Snapping out of it already. <laughs> How about it, Bill, old boy? Happy? Is he? Oh, princess, I could kiss you. Stand in front of your horse. <laughs> nice little place you've got here. Yeah. Who sleeps on the cot, so you are the horse. Ah, none of your cracks, princess. Come on, sit down. Tell me everything. How's Margaret? When's she coming down? Well, she's fine, but I don't think she's coming down. Uh, Matilda has the grip, and... Well, you know. Yeah, sure, I know. Well... Give her a kiss for me when you get back, will you? But I'm not going back. I'm stopping at the hotel in town. Oh, now, hey, cut it out. You're taking the next train back to Higginsville. Hey, wait a minute. Give me your purse. Ten, twenty, twenty-five. There, I'm leaving you some. Oh, thanks. Big hearted Dan, that's me. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. This isn't Higgins' money, is it? No, it's my own. Uh, that's all right, then. This twenty-five is going to enter Bill in a race tomorrow. He wins it, earns five hundred, goes into the handicap and wins twenty-five thousand. And the little princess gets her original investment back with a swell present from Dan for interest. I can hardly wait. Now you better beat it back to Higginsville. Go on now. Sorry, but I'm staying here until the big race is over. Are you crazy? What'll Emperor Higgins think? Hang the Emperor. <laughs> Another revolutionary, huh? Beautiful heiress scorns empire. Think I'll have any difficulty down here? Well, what do you think you're going to do? Find yourself a nice rosy-cheeked peasant and get married? Swell idea. Great. Got anybody in mind? Oh, you. <laughs> what about that guy back home? Come on, tell Dan. What's he like? All right. He's perfect. He's the ideal man. He's he's 11 feet tall, no ears, and eats little children. You satisfied? Hey, princess, don't get sore. Hey. What's the matter with her? One, 
37. That's what the time was on him just now. You know what that means? Yes, sir, boss. It means that horse is just plain grease light and only without no grease to hold him back. <laughs> Whitey, it's in the bag. We've kissed our last trouble goodbye. Uh, just one thing worries me, boss. What's that? Old Pop, that feed man. He sure is figuring to get that money here. Ah, forget it. All we have to do is stall him off until after the race. Oh, me, yeah, I wish that big race was... <laughs> Boss, is my nose lying or does I smell eatments? What do you think? You're right. Take care of Bill. Hi, partner. About time you got here. Hurry and clean up or you'll be late for dinner. Hey, what is this? I thought you went home. Get out of my way. How can I cook if you clutter up my kitchen? Wait a minute. Where'd you get the food? You let me worry about that. Whitey tells me you haven't been eating. Oh, he's crazy. We can't win races if you don't eat. I'm not running. What's all this? All these cans of stuff. Well, I thought while I was buying stuff for dinner, I'd, I'd sort of lay in a supply. <laughs> the princess. Princess, you're pretty swell. Now tell me, what's the idea? Mm, don't bother me. I'm here and I'm going to stay here. Mm, okay. Which of these cans do we open tonight? Oh, the split pea soup and the succotash. The split pea soup and the succotash, huh? Well, give me the can opener. Oh, the split pea soup and the succotash Had a fight once upon a time uh, Said the split pea soup to the succotash Without corn you'd be just lime uh. I never took a lesson in my life Oh, gosh darn, said the succotash You're not so much yourself, uh. What makes you so happy tonight? Happy? Well, I'll tell you I'm happy because at last the old man with the whiskers Has his armor on my shoulders I'm happy because I entered Broadway Bill In a $500 race tomorrow With the money you forced on me I'm happy because we're going to win it And that means we can enter the handicap and that means our troubles are over. Oh, gosh darn, said the succotash. You're not so much yourself, uh, uh, What rhymes with self, uh? You do want to win that race, don't you? Sure, I got to. Got to have money to do things. Princess, before I get through, I'm going to have the finest string of thoroughbreds in the country. It's starting to rain. Margaret will be proud of me then. She'll have to be. Doesn't think much of me right now. I got to show her. Don't be silly. That's why I got to win that big race. I got to get her out of Higginsville. Think I ever will? Sure. Sure you will. I say, boss. Rain's coming in here where Broadway Bill Small Margaret, is. Margaret just wants to be shown, that's all. She really isn't... Boss, the roof's leaking. What? The rain is coming in on Bill. One real storm, boss. Dan. Come on. Easy, Bill. Easy, boy. It's all right. Take it easy. Hey, why do those rags over there? Take them, get up there and stuff that hole in the roof just above Bill. Hurry up. Uh, yes, sir, boss. Alice, close that window. Easy, Bill. Easy, boy. Are you all right, Dan? I don't know. Just came in from the track. If he gets a chill now, it'll be all off. Boss, look at his legs. He got a chill, sure enough. He's shaking all over right now. Is he all right, Doctor? How about it? Mm, he's a long way from all right. A mighty sick animal. High fever and needs a lot of care and rest. But, Doctor... He's supposed to run in a race today. Race? You want to kill him? Well, how about Saturday, Doc? He's got to run Saturday. That's the big race. Mm, Saturday, eh? Well, can't tell. Animals are funny. Sometimes they snap out of these things like that. But even so, it's a risk. Bad strain on his heart so soon after a fever like this. But whatever you do, don't run him before then. Give him all the rest you can. Thanks, Doc. Thanks a lot. Okay, and I'll send that medicine. Gee, boss, that old man with the whiskers don't appear to me to be working so good. If Bill is still too sick to run on Saturday... Oh, he won't be. Will you, Bill, old timer? You're going to be right in there with him, aren't you? Dan, he looks so pathetic. I tell you, he's all right. I'm sorry, Princess. It's just that I... Sure, I know. Well, one thing's a cinch. Bill can't run today. That means we've still got to raise the 500 for entry fee. Yeah, but how, boss? I don't know yet. Who are you going? Find the colonel and Happy. Must be somewhere in this town to raise $500. Good luck. Gosh, Miss Alice. Mm, I know. Things sure look terrible. But moaning about it won't change them. Why, do you haven't you got any ideas? Ideas? Yes, ma'am. I got two of them right here. You mean a crap game? You might win? <laughs> Listen, Miss Alice. The way Lady Luck has been frowning at us, I couldn't win a bad nickel. But you could try. Wait a minute. Whitey. It's possible that you might win, say, $200 today and, and another 200 or so tomorrow, isn't it? I mean, if you came and told Dan he, you had, he'd believe you. Yes, sir, I reckon so. Why do you stay here and nurse Bill? Little Alice has a job of her own to do. What about it, Colonel? Any luck? Dan, it's a little unfortunate, to be frank. We had an excellent proposition, Happy and I. Got a sucker, a stranger... <coughs> 
to pay us $25 for the exclusive information that a horse named Doughboy was a cinch in the fourth race. Yeah, well, where's the 25? Wait a minute. Hear all, my friend. Hear all. I am abashed to confess, Dan, my boy, that in some strange way, the rumor that the stranger <coughs> spread like wildfire. In fact, it, uh, it even came to my own tender ears. You mean you bet the 25 on your own phony tip? Alas, my head is bowed, Danny, my lad. I did. <coughs> yeah, and Doughboy was never heard from again. I'm sorry, Dan, sorry. Yes, I am, yes. Well, you tried anyway. It's like a big job ahead of us tomorrow. Here's all I could raise, 56 bucks. Dan, Dan. Yeah, what is it? It's Whitey. He's got money. Uh, here you are, boys. Oh, thanks, Whitey, but... You... Hey, there's... There's 108... 200... There's $210 here. Yes, sir. Don't wake me. I'm dreaming. But but how, Whitey? What did you... Uh, 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 I still got my bones, boy. Oh, Whitey, yours... Dan, listen. It's Bill. He's up. He's on his feet again. Sure he is. And look at his eyes. Clear as spring water. You're all right now, aren't you, Bill? Think you'll be able to run, boy? You bet he'll run. Yeah, forgive me for adding a solemn note to this festive moment, but you've still got less than 300 simoleons for that entry fee. Yeah, you that's... need five. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Whitey, those dice of yours, do you think they can perform as well tomorrow as they did today? Uh, I don't know, boss. Of course they can, Whitey. You know they can. Well, I guess so, Mr. Boss. If Miss Alice says so, I reckon they can. Well, back for your watch already, Miss? Your luck must have changed. No, I, I want to know how much you can give me on this ring. Hmm, let's see. About 150. I need 200. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, 160 is the limit. Yes, but I've got to have... Wait a minute. This coat. It's mink. How much for that? But I don't take furs, miss. That's security, isn't it? Give me 220 on both the ring and the coat, and that's all I need. Please. Mm, all right. <laughs> as long as it's you. 220. Oh, thanks. Whitey? Oh, yes, sir, Miss Alice. This man will give you $220. Now take it to Mr. Dan and tell him he can enter Broadway Bill in the big race. Yes, ma'am. Soup and the succotash were in love one spring and summer till the split pea soup caught the succotash on the vest of a traveling drummer. Hey, must you do that? No. Nope. That's a relief. <laughs> ah, what an evening. Say, aren't you chilly without a coat? No, I, I left it up at the hotel. Well, I'd better say good night, Dan. No, no, don't go yet. Sit down. It's a swell night. You know, Princess, I'm a very lucky fella. Your old man with the whiskers has certainly been on the job. Yeah, you bet I got everything. Great horse inside there, beautiful wife. Nice soft shoulder on which to lay my weary head. Princess? Huh? Yeah, all right. Thank you. You're not really Higgins at all. I bet you had some real nice people in your family somewhere. Pirates or something. Dan. Hmm? Suppose you lose the race tomorrow. What then? No, oh, we can't lose. But if we do? Back to Higginsville. Promised Margaret. Told her if Bill loses that race tomorrow, I don't know anything about horses. Might just as well make paper boxes. But we won't lose, Princess. You can't if you wish hard enough. You know what I believe? What? That you can wish for something so hard you wish it into existence. You try that sometimes. I have tried it. Lots of times. No, I should worry. I got a great horse. Even answers when I call to him. You know that? Listen. <whistles> oh, must be asleep. Well, he'll get it this time. <whistles> hey, that's funny. He always answers when I whistle to him. Hey, Bill, what's... Dan, he's gone. Oh, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks, I've been looking for you. They took him. They done took him. Who, Whitey? Who took him? Mr. Jones, the feed man. He come with the sheriff. Had an attachment or something. An attachment? Yes, sir. Just walked in with the papers and took him. It was terrible, boss, the way they was jerking him. He had his neck tied to a rope, and they was pulling him along over the cobblestone behind a car. They'll kill him, Whitey. I tried to stop him, boss. I chased him as far as I could. Where'd they take him? I don't know, well, boss. I'll find him. Dan, be careful, Dan. <laughs> Get in that stall. That's it, Joe. Juggies head around. I said, get in there, you. Let go of that horse. Give me that bridle. That's my horse. What is this? I'll handle this truck horse, and I'll handle him the way I want. Yeah? <clears throat> Cut it, smart guy. What do you think you are, Madison Square Garden? You're under arrest. That's your room now, mister. But officer, don't you see? I can't stay in here. Sorry, I gotta... can't do a thing for you. Socking a deputy sheriff is a serious offense. You'll have to talk to the judge. But when? What time in the morning do they hold court? In the morning. There's no court tomorrow on account of the big race. Sorry, brother, but it looks like you're stuck till Monday. We pause for 
station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. So ends Act Two of Broadway Bill, starring Robert Taylor and Francis D. During this short intermission, we introduce our guest of the evening. But first, a word about our product. Lux Flakes gives you double help in your dishpan. They're speedy and they're gentle. Lux dissolves quickly and works fast. And Lux is kind to your hands. It has no harmful alkali, absolutely nothing to dry or irritate your skin. Isn't it foolish to use harsh soaps? They're hard on your hands. Or cake soap, it's so slow. Remember, Lux helps you in two ways. It's speedy and it's gentle. It's thrifty, too. So buy the generous large size box of Lux Flakes and keep it in your kitchen. And now, here is Mr. DeMille with our guest. Since the cradle days of the Republic, the breeding and racing of thoroughbred horses has endowed the field of sports with America's finest ideals in ethics, fair play, and tradition. It's men like our guest, Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt, who are keeping that hallowed heritage gloriously alive today. Racing authorities say that this young man is fast becoming one of the greatest personalities on the American turf. He's president of the Maryland Jockey Club, which runs the Pimlico race course in Maryland, and owner of Sagamore Farms, where his string of horses include the famous Discovery, Identify, Galley Slave, and Impound. Let's join Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt in New York City. In your play tonight, Mr. DeMille, Dan Brooks surrenders his home and career for the love of a racehorse. While I don't recommend that other men follow his example, it's very easy to understand Dan's feeling for Broadway Bill. Some people have the idea that men run horses just to collect handsome purses. Believe me, that's not the case. Of all the rewards a racehorse brings its owner, the prize money is not the greatest. The real joy and thrill come by watching a spindly little foal grow into a fine game animal, showing his worth and breeding on the racetrack. Don't think this modern mechanized age is marking the doom of fine horses, racing or otherwise. For in our country, there are still more than 11 million horses. But, of course, all these 11 million aren't bluegrass animals. And incidentally, bluegrass is quite green. It's called blue because it has a blue flower. And it's important to breeders because it contains certain chemicals. Many people think Kentucky and Maryland have a monopoly on all bluegrass. But the plain truth is that it grows all over the country. When it comes to monopoly on champions, though, it's a different story. For actually 90% of all the stake winners are raised in three states, Maryland, Virginia, and Kentucky. Uh, a common misconception in the public mind is that any horse of good lineage is a thoroughbred. The thoroughbred is just one particular breed of horse which goes back 400 years to the time of Henry VIII for its origin. At that time, three Arabian stallions were brought to England <clears throat> to be bred to English mares. From then on, the race was kept pure, and every thoroughbred in the world today is related to those three Arabian stallions. Thoroughbred ancestry can be traced further back than that of any other living animal. The history of horse flesh shows that horses originated on this continent and then disappeared completely from it at some time in the several million years that have passed since their origin. At first, the horse was only the size of a police dog, with three toes on each foot and no means of defending itself in a fight, so it had to develop speed and size in order to survive. Now, in those days, Alaska and Asia were united by land, and some of the hardier specimens of the American horse migrated to Europe that way, keeping the race going in Europe, though it disappeared in America. Explorers like the Spaniard Cortez, who 400 years ago conquered the vast Mexican empire with 18 horses and a handful of men, were responsible for reintroducing a bigger, stronger horse into America. We have lots to learn from horses, especially in the application of that valuable asset known as horse sense. If I've absorbed any through association with horses, it prompts me now to pull in the reins and let you, Mr. DeMille, get on with your excellent play. Thank you. Thank you for the horse sense, Mr. Vanderbilt. And now back in Hollywood, we hear Robert Taylor and Francis D. in Act Three of Broadway Bill with Gail Patrick and Raymond Walburn. It's 
the following morning, the day of the long-awaited handicap. Dan in his cell in the Imperial City Jail has an early morning visitor. Hello, Princess. Dan, I tried all night to see you. They wouldn't let me in. What can we do? Nothing, Princess. We're sunk. I guess we didn't wish hard enough. The old man with the whiskers didn't hear us. So now it's back to Higginsville? Yeah, back to Higginsville. I guess Margaret will get a kick out of this. She in jail. Dan, don't talk like that. It isn't too late yet. Something might happen. No, it's just not the day for miracles. Might as well scratch Broadway, Bill. Get him out of the race and take it over. Get it over with. Need a one, too. Did you see the morning paper? They got him listed as a hundred to one shot. Well, a hundred to one or a million to one, I still say he'd a one. He's in here. Thanks. You got a visitor, Brooks. Ten minutes, mister. That's enough. Hi, Mr. Brooks. How are you? My name's Eddie North. I hear you've got a horse in the handicap this afternoon. I did have. He was scratched. Yeah. That was too bad. It ain't too late to re-enter him. How? All you gotta do is to pay off that feed bill. They release your horse and you can stick him back in the race. Yeah, sure. The feed bill's only $150. I know. I'll pay it if you want. You... See, what is this? Now, here's the idea, Mr. Brooks. Broadway bill was quoted this morning at 100 to 1. For some reason or other, the, the odds started to go down. Some slap-happy guy named Pettigrew started a rumor that the horse was a sure thing. And just before you scratched the race, the nag was down to 9 to 2. 9 to 2? Yeah, that's it. So I think he ought to run. Wait a minute. Are you going to put a bet on him? Me? <laughs> no. I'm betting on Gallant Lady. Oh, I get it. You want my horse back in the race so the odds will go up on Gallant Lady? Huh? That's it. Just a business proposition. Strictly on the up and up. Well, what do you say? What do I say? Why, this, this, this floors me. Ah, oh, forget it. One old racing man is always glad to help another. Here you are. 150 for the feed bill, huh? And here's another hundred to pay a bail or fine or whatever you need to get out of here. Well, look, I'll pay this back just as soon uh, as I get... don't worry about it. I'll be paid plenty when Gallant Lady breezes in. <laughs> you better switch that bet, mister. Bill's a cinch. Sure, sure. Say, by the way, uh, how are you fixed for a jockey? Well, uh... How'd you like to have Ted Williams ride your horse? Williams? Do you think I could get him? It's in the bag. I'll have him at your stable in an hour. Brother, you better get out of here. I'm about to break down and cry on your shoulder. <laughs> so long, Mr. Brooks. I've got a fellow waiting for me. See you out at the track. Yeah, so long and thanks. Hey, Eddie. Eddie. Did you see him? Yeah. He's putting the nag back in the race. Swell. We'll get five to one on the lady now easy. Maybe better. Sure. Yeah, but say, what about that Broadway Bill nag? They say he's pretty hot. <laughs> Listen, Cluck, that horse is a plug. Yeah? And even if he wasn't, I've got Ted Williams riding him. And Mr. Williams takes his orders from me. Oh, boy, look at that horse. Easy, easy, quiet, boy. You're sure, Williams, that you know how to handle him? Oh, sure, Mr. Brooks, sure. Mr. North said for me to ride a good race for you, and what he says goes. Bill isn't just an ordinary horse. He sure ain't. Now remember, son, don't use the whip. He doesn't like it. Oh, well, I'm glad you told me that. Uh, he, he'll probably take the lead right at first. We'll let him have it. Don't hold him back. Whatever happens, don't hold him back. I get it. It's in the bag. There's the post call. Listen, son, I, I gotta win this race. It means more to me than... Well, my whole future depends on it. So go ahead and good luck. Oh, wait a minute. So long, Bill. The old man's counting on you. Me too, Bill. And Skeeter, he's counting on you plenty, Bill. All right, Williams. I'll see you later in the winner's circle. Oh, Dan. Do you suppose Bill's all right? All right? Well, it's crazy, I guess, but I'm scared. He didn't have any too good care last night, and you remember what the veterinary said. Hey, quit it, will you? I'm sorry. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm just excited. Well, good luck, darling. Thanks, Princess. And you're going to win. You've got to. For my sake. What does that mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, wait a minute. No, please. It's crazy, I tell you. Come on, let's get up in the stand. The horses are at the starting gate. As I've already told you, contender is in the number one position. Gallant Lady, number two. Gal Spa, number three. Sun Up, number four. Broadway Bill, number five. And Broadway Bill just backed out of his stall. They're bringing him up again. Constant. Is number six, Buster Boy seven, and now they're all lined up down there. It looks like a started, and there they go. It's Gals Bar going to the front. Buster Boy is second, Miss Ann is third, Gallant Lady is fourth, Sun Up is fifth, and Roger B. They're going into the first turn with Gals Bar in front by a length and a half. 
Desayan is second by one length. Sun Up is third by half a length. Gallant Lady is fourth by a nose. Roger B is fifth. And Buster Boy is sixth. At the quarter, it's Dal Spar in front by one length. Miss Ann is second. Gallant Lady is third by two lengths. Sun Up is fourth. The length in front of Raja B. And there goes Gallant Lady. Gallant Lady is coming up fast on the inside and is now first by one length. Gal Spar is second. Miss What's the matter with Broadway Bill? Where is he? Seventh. That jockey's holding him back. Let him go. Give him his head. Let him go. Come on, Bill. Come on, boy. Yeah, they're stealing the race. They're pulling him back. Give him his head. Let him go. Come there. on, Bill. Get up there, boy. It's no use. They framed him. They took the race right out from under. No, no, no. He's moving up. He's coming up. That jockey can't hold him. He'll never hold him. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Get up there, Bill. Keep moving, boy. They're rounding the far turn. It's Gallant Lady in front by three lengths. Gal's far is second. Miss Ann is third. Roger B is fourth. And here comes Broadway Bill moving very fast. It's Gallant Lady in front by three lengths. Miss Ann is second. And Broadway Bill is third on the outside. And moving up. They're heading for home. It's Gallant Lady in front by two lengths. Broadway Bill is second and Miss Ann is third. It's Gallant Lady and Broadway Bill. It's Gallant Lady by one length. Broadway Bill is second. It's Gallant Lady and Broadway Bill. It's Gallant Lady and Broadway Bill. They're running neck and neck. It's going to be a driving finish. Broadway Bill is pulling away. And they're coming down to the line of finish with Broadway Bill, the winner. What's the matter? Tough luck, Mr. Brooks. He was a great animal. Dan, no. What are, you t- what are you talking about? Get a vet here. It's no use. Your horse is dead. He won your race for you, but he broke his heart doing it. Sorry, Brooks. And I know that every one of you who stand here on this field today while we pay last honors to a great horse were here yesterday to see his triumph. A triumph that no racing man worth the name will soon forget. I can only say on behalf of the Imperial track that we're proud that Broadway Bill's grave is going to be right here where it is, at the track itself. I never heard of a horse getting just this kind of tribute before, but then I never heard of a horse that so thoroughly deserved it. There's nothing more I can say. The only man who can say anything is Bill's owner, Dan Brooks. Well, you're wrong, Mr. Collins. If there's anybody who can say anything, it's me. Thanks. Thanks to the track for doing this for Bill. Thanks to so many of you for coming out, for coming here now. As for Broadway Bill, well, what could you say about a horse who'd run his heart out to win for you? All I can say is, thanks, Bill. And so long. Is it? It's I, Dan. Margaret. Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Oh, darling, you did come. I knew you would. Gee, I'm sorry if I didn't see you at the track just now, but... Track? But the race was yesterday. But I mean for the... Oh. Then you didn't come for... I came to take you home, Dan. Father's held your job open, and, and I've told everyone that you were just on a vacation. Oh. Well, look, Margaret, let's talk about all this some other time, right now. We'll talk I'll... about it now, Dan. I know how you must feel about your horse, and, and I'm sorry for your sake, even though... Well, we'll have to admit that things working out as they have have made it easier for us. Easier? Well, let's be sensible, darling. The one real barrier between us was Broadway Bill. And while I'm sorry he's gone... I I see what you mean. I'm glad, Dan. Now... Yeah, you shouldn't be. Because seeing what you mean, I also see for the first time things I should have seen a long time ago. Dan. So it was just Bill that stood between us, huh? You're right, he did. But it wasn't just Bill himself. It was what he stood for, Margaret. And he stood for my kind of life. And that's just the opposite of yours. We don't speak the same language, Margaret. Dan, you either leave here and come home with me now, or I start divorce proceedings in the morning. All right, start them. Now that I think of it, there have been just two things that ever mattered to you, yourself and those comical family traditions of yours. Well, you can keep them. Thank you, I will. 
Dan, what happened? Margaret just... Margaret's gone, Princess. It seems your cousin wants my life run her way, and I want it mine. That's all there is to it. You mean... She's starting divorce proceedings in the morning. Well, why don't you say something? Can't I? I uh, know. You're naturally fond of Margaret and probably... Th- oh, will you shut up? What is this? <laughs> oh, let me alone. Princess! Uh, Mr. Bowles. Why did you see that? What's the matter with her? You mean you, you don't know? How should I know? What are you talking about? Listen, Mr. Bowles. Where do you think most of that 500 bucks come from to end a bill in that race? Well, you won it. I won nothing. Miss Alice done hawk all her things and give me that money to give to you. Why do you... Mr. Dan, about some things, you're the brightest man I ever see. But about other things, I don't know, boss. No, neither do I. You all going back to Higginsville, boss? Yeah, but not for a while and for a different reason. Yes, J.L., you're, you're right, right J.L. Yes, J.L., yes, J.L., don't yes, J.L. me. Say no once in a while, can't you? Here's a little news for all of you are still directors of the Higgins Enterprises, particularly my beloved sons-in-law. This is the last of our meetings. What does it mean? And oh, another no, thing. Yes. The Higgins Paper Box Company was sold this afternoon. But, Father, just because Dan and I are divorced was no reason to sell the company. I'm selling all the companies. The only thing I'm keeping is the bank. Bravo, J.L. Father, what is this all about? Hmm? I don't even know myself. When I went up to the track the other day and I saw something that made me sit up a little... I'm wondering now if there isn't more to living than just making money. Like you, Mr. Early, and you, Mr. Morrow, and you, Mr. Winslow. But what about us, J.L.? What will become of us? What can we do? Do what you want. The meeting's adjourned. <coughs> hey! It's Dan. Look, he's got a... J.L., it's a horse trailer. Hmm, with a horse in it. Uh, what does it say on the door there? Broadway Bill the Second. Hey, Princess, come on. I can't wait all night. Jill, I... Go on, go on, go on. Don't you be an idiot like Margaret. Oh, Jill. Goodbye, darling. Hey, come on. Well, it's about time, Slowpoke. Oh, Jill, darling. Come on, come on, get in. We're heading for the Latonia track. There's just one thing to do first. What's that? Make a queen out of the princess. Oh, Dan. Hey, why the tears? Oh, Dan, it, it worked. What? What you said about wishing... Your, your old man with the whiskers has finally got his arm around my shoulders. He has, huh? Well, you tell that old guy I'll stand for no nonsense with my wife. Is that right, young Bill? Hey. <laughs> the split pea soup and succotash were in love one spring and summer. <laughs> Curtain falls on the last act of Broadway Bill, starring Robert Taylor and Francis D. with Gail Patrick. Our stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. But first, a word to the ladies. Do you realize that about one-third of your silhouette today is stockings? Certainly no time for runs. They're ugly, embarrassing, spoiling your whole costume. You know, you can do a lot to cut down on runs by the proper buying and care of stockings. Here are three helpful rules for stocking beauty. One... Buy the correct size and the right leg length. Two. Buy the right weight for the occasion. One and two thread stockings for evening. Three thread for daytime, four thread or heavier for sports. Three. Give your stockings Lux Care. Lux saves elasticity and cuts down on runs. Yes, with gentle Lux Flakes, there's no cake soap rubbing. No harmful alkali to weaken elasticity. Remember that. Lux helps your stockings wear longer and fit better. So keep the generous large size box in the bathroom and lux your stockings after every wearing. Here's Mr. DeMille. Our stars are in the home stretch, but we have a few minutes more with them before they cross the finish line. Incidentally, Mr. Taylor, in spite of your confidence tonight in Broadway Bill's speed, did you know that the chances are that in a long race, you could probably beat Broadway Bill yourself? <laughs> you mean if I could run with a jockey on my back? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I'm perfectly serious. You mean to say, Mr. DeMille, that if it were Taylor versus Seabiscuit, you'd put your $2 on Mr. Taylor's nose in preference to Seabiscuit's? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, because generally speaking, a man can outrun a horse over a long distance. As far as I know, the last time that was demonstrated was in England, 15 years ago, when George Hall, a marathon runner, raced a racehorse named Blackjack in a six-day endurance contest. The horse was withdrawn on the fifth day, with Hall 15 miles in the lead and still going strong. <laughs> but uh, switching from racehorses to iron horses, Mr. DeMille, I understand you're leaving us tonight for the world premiere of Union Pacific next Friday night in Omaha. I can tell you all about that, Bob. For months, I've waited patiently for Mr. DeMille to finish that picture so I might see something of my husband again. But now that it's finished, what's he going to do but take Joel East for the premiere? Yes, and Barbara Stanwyck and about 20 other celebrities. In fact, to mark the departure, they're opening up the brand new $11 million Union Station in Los Angeles. Mr. DeMille's going to be aboard the first train to leave, a train exactly like the kind they used in the 1860s, with a wood-burning engine, red plush seats in the cars, hanging kerosene lamps... And, and... signs reading, Don't Shoot Buffalo from the Train. <laughs> We'll be stopping at several cities along the way. Salt Lake City, Cheyenne, Denver, and then after Omaha, where the Union Pacific old-timers have arranged a celebration for us, I'm taking the picture further east to open it in Chicago, New York, and Washington. Well, that sort of complicates things, doesn't it? Now, even if you could run as fast as a racehorse, I think you're going to be just slightly out of breath if you plan to make this broadcast here next Monday night. <laughs> I won't even try. Instead, I'll be heard on the program next Monday night from New York City while one of the most capable gentlemen in motion pictures will be here pinch-hitting for me. The guest producer will be Mr. Leslie Howard. We'll be rooting for him, Mr. DeMille, and for you, too. And I hope you have as good a time on your trip, C.B., as I did here doing Broadway Bill. Good night. And just you see that Joel Albert McRae takes care of himself, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> good night. <laughs> That's a promise, Francis. Good night, Gail. So long, Bob. We know you want to hear about the stars and play in store for you a week from tonight. Well, Mr. DeMille supplies that information presently. In our cast this evening, you heard Ernest Whitman as Whitey, Lou Merrill as J.L. Higgins, Elvia Allman as Mrs. Peterson, Victor Rodman as Mr. Winslow, Eddie Kane as Mr. Early, Willis Clare as Eddie North, Hal K. Dawson as Roberts, Niall Andrus as Mel, Frank Nelson as announcer, Frederick Shields as Mr. Morrow, Myra Marsh as Matilda, Joe Duvall as veterinary, and James Eagles as Ted Williams. Broadway Bill was adapted from the Columbia Pictures photoplay of the same name. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he directed music for the new film, The Story of Alexander Graham Bell. Just a reminder, as you know, many localities switch to daylight saving time next Sunday. If your community is one of those changing to daylight saving time, you will hear this program at the usual hour. If your community remains on standard time, tune in one hour earlier. Here's our producer. Damon Runyon wrote the original story on which our play next Monday night is based. Frank Capra directed it and starred were Mae Robeson, Warren William, Gene Parker, and Guy Kibbe. And these same four celebrities will repeat their performances for us next week in Lady for a Day. It's a story of Apple Annie a street peddler, a story of laughter and tears, of sacrifice and romance. And in addition to the stars of our cast, Leslie Howard will be with us as guest producer. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Mae Robeson, Warren William, Jean Parker, and Guy Kibbe in Lady for a Day with Leslie Howard as guest producer. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Ruiz. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.